right, everyone. Thanks for joining for another session of BoatingTechTalk.com. We've got a question from a fellow boater named David. David goes on to ask, Jeff, I've got a new to me 2007 pilot house with a 10.5 kilowatt generator. I also have on board a Victron 5,000 watt inverter charger, and I recently installed a water maker. Okay. All right. So far, that's the setup. My first time at Anchor, I turned the water maker, and after a few minutes, the generator stopped and went in shutdown mode. Okay. I understand that I should have stepped down or turned off the charger when I'm wait- making water. Can you explain what happened? Well, this is a quite common occurrence. The reality is that all of us, um, no matter how big your boat is, it could be a 100-footer, could be a 70-footer, could be a 50-footer, could be a 30-footer. Could it be even 25 footer. Most of us have more AC appliances on our boat that both the shore power or the generator can handle. All of us, all of us, and of course there's exceptions, but even I'm telling you, many, many of us will have to be very careful deciding what loads can be run concurrently at the same time. And it gets trickier because loads aren't loads. Depending on where you are in a load and what kind of load it is, there are what's called inductive AC loads and resistive AC loads. And a water maker is an inductive AC load. And inductive loads mean that you might have a high surge of power required to run that load. So even though you might be running that load at 20 amps, sometimes when maybe a DC motor is turning, and suddenly turning on, you might see a high end rush more than the typical amperage that you would see running that load. And that's normal. It's called an inductive load. So when you're actually, uh, no matter what your generator size is, you're going to have to make some decisions as to what can be run at the same time and also the sequence by which you run certain items at the same time. So generally, you want to run the first items that you care about first. So if you've stopped and now you want to make water first, and depending on size of your water maker, you might want to disable or disconnect or turn off all the loads that are really not essential right now. And start by loading your generator with the things that matter. And probably I would go start with the inductive loads first, because those are the ones that are going to need more power to start than to run. And then what I would do is I would start loading up and adding additional loads. But remember, you don't want, even if you've got a 10 or 10 and a half kilowatt generator, you're not going to run it at max. You can run it pretty close, but not at max and certainly not over because otherwise your generator is going to have show a fault. So the key, and this is the same thing for shore power, by the way, even if you had a 50 amp shore power cord at 220 or 120 or 30 amp, you, many of us have to be careful and we can't run like a high output charger, uh, a water heater, a water maker, or whatever, maybe even run something in the galley, have an induction stovetop or uh, a convection microwave. Many of us won't be able to run all those loads at the same time. So over time, one has to learn what is the operating amperage of any given load. I know that's part of it. And then the also is the reality, is it an inductive or resistive load? And do I ever see a peak or a spike in that current draw? And if I do, allow my inductive loads to start at the beginning so they have more buffer to take up. And as you start loading your generator, put your resistive loads at the end because you know that your resistive loads are not going to equal or not going to exceed, sorry, what you anticipated. And so... Nothing's easy. It's a boat. Even if you have it all, you still have to work at it. And this is a clear example of a typical scenario that happens to many of us. So that's a great question from David. And thanks for all of you to chime in and listen to Boating Tech Talk. I appreciate it. If you're curious, we've written whole articles about this. Go on our website, search it out. Uh, and we've got a lot of other uh, tech talks about this very topic. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Um, it actually, it really does make a difference and encourages us to keep posting. So if you're watching this video and haven't had a chance to subscribe, we really do care because the more of you that are watching, the more of us over here are willing to put, spend more time in creating content. So thanks again.